Hey guys, it's Chuck from Brady Adventures, and in this episode of our dual battery install, we are going to be finally wiring the two main batteries together through the MLACR switch under the hood. So this is really bringing it all home. We hope you enjoy the video. One of the things um, people like to do is use breakers for this stuff. Of the blue C breakers, you go up to about 200. I think I've seen a 250. Um, but between the one gauge between the two batteries, you run quite a bit more uh, than you can get from a breaker. You know, the best thing to do is fuse to the wire and um, that's what I decided to do. So I have a 300 amp fuse that's going to be fusing the one aught and a 200 amp that's for the two gauge. Uh, inside the vehicle, I'll always have replacements for these. This is really to protect from a fire and like an accident or something like that, having a battery explode due to shorted wire and so that's going to be about right for that side now on this side i couldn't decide exactly how i was going to do this if i put this on here when you put the eyelets on here then this eyelet can go straight back but this one's going to have to go up and over um, so that wasn't ideal now i can face it back out this way and when i do that that solves all my problems i have a feeling that if i ever decide to put a compressor in here I may have to then come back and reposition this back like this. If I would have known this, I may have done something different than this. Uh, I thought about turning the battery around because of some comments that I had on another video. The problem with that is this little piece right here on the hot side, when you turn that around, it pushes this. This is super, super tight right here, and that little extra three quarters of an inch, you just can't get it in there. I'm gonna go ahead and get the terminals on here and get the fuses all tightened up and get these covers on. I decided to move the 200 amp fuse and the accessory wire up to this position just because it's like this two gauge wire and the two gauge can make a little tighter turn there. You can find links to the products we've used in the video description or on our website, bradyadventures.com. This was right about the time I realized I did not have the right eyelets to do the single lot wire. So I decided to switch gears and rewire the primary battery ground cables. I upgraded the ground wire from the terminal to the chassis with two gauge wire and crimped on a new eyelet to the main wire from the block. If you haven't seen my other warnings, low torches for shrink wrap, probably not the best idea. Finally, my one aught connectors are delivered. So now the only thing I'm waiting for is shrink wrap that's good enough to go around this stuff and the single aught wire. Hey guys, I'm totally psyched. I got my last piece that I needed uh, to finish up the kit. It is a one inch shrink tubing. And this stuff is gigantic, you can see. It was the only tubing I could find that was big enough for the single aught gauge eyelets. Um, it was so big, I was a little worried when I got it that it wouldn't fit, so I did a little test uh, shrink wrap here and it shrank down just nicely. So, um, this morning I just got up really early. The weather has broke a little bit, so it's not as cold as it's been, and I'm going to finish this up. Um, I've got literally four small wires for the Blue C MLACR um, in cab switch to wire up, and then the two main wires. So, all I'm going to do is route those, put some connectors on them, um, hook them up to this guy, hook these little wires up, and then we're going to uh, be able to check the whole system out, and hopefully, it's going to be working just right. All right, here we go. This red stuff um, is way, way more than I need, and they didn't actually have any black in stock, and, and I wanted to get this moving. So on the ground wires, I'm gonna use the same shrink wrap, and I'm just gonna do a little wrap around this with uh, a black. I spent a good deal of time finding the best route for the wire to make sure it wouldn't interfere with anything under the hood. Finally found my big pair of dikes. These having something big to cut large wire like this is absolutely essential all right so here we go so ground to ground direct i'm gonna hook it up to this battery <clears throat> there we go so i got the wires cut to length i crimped on the connectors and shrink wrapped everything 
So all these zip ties, I'm doing real loose until I get everything exactly where I want and I know nothing's interfering with anything else. And then I'll pull it up real tight. All right, to do this final step, I have decided I'm gonna take the air box out just because it's gonna be nice and easy to get in here and work on getting the MLACR switch in. All right, this is more like it. I have a lot of room to work in here. Um, here's the switch. So it's gonna mount right here. So I need to trim this wire, get a connector on it and um, hook it up to here. And then um, I gotta hook all these up. So I got a little uh, mat to put in here. And kind of protect stuff. It's, it's real important when you're uh, putting these on that you have them angled in the right direction. Some of this heavier gauge wire is not like twisting, uh, especially once you have it all locked down. So do about like that. So I crimp it like this. I'm trying to make sure it doesn't turn until I crimp it. Another thing that I got uh, were these stud terminal covers. Fastronics. It's the same as the company that does these covers. That's gonna shove right over that and go like that. So nice, neat, protected um, hookup. Crimped this on, so now I'm gonna do this other end here. Um, so this is gonna go from the switch up to the fuse up here. One of the things I like to do when I'm sealing these up with the shrink wrap is make sure that there's some exposed area here because that shrink wrap, the glue in it, is going to seal around this and seal around this and then hold this together and seal but if you don't have that little bit right there i kind of worry that you might get a little moisture in there and that's what's going to cause that copper to oxidize in there and over time you'll get some resistance and it can cause you some problems i considered using a deutsch plug for the mlacr switch and I wish I would have because it was quite a big mess of wires that were terminated and spliced together. The bottom mounting screws are really hard to get to these guys down here without with the wire already on there. Um, and I put the wire on there because it was going to be hard to get the covers, these covers over the studs without having it out. And All right, holy moly, this thing, getting this in was a lot um, a lot tougher than I really thought. Um, just getting everything lined up, getting the in cab switch hooked up. I mean, man, that thing is a pain in the butt. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish zip tying all this, getting everything firmly in place, and then I will um, connect the hots and see what we got going on. Now that everything's lined up pretty good, I'm gonna tighten all the zip ties and cut them to length. You know, one thing I don't think I've uh, mentioned enough times is when you're working on the hot side, you definitely want this to be covered up. A, a wrench like that uh, could make contact between this and a ground or even between the two um, could be really dangerous. So what I usually like to do is keep, save these guys uh, and use them when, when, you're, um, when you're working on stuff. So I'm just going to loosen up this ground here and I'm just going to put that on there like that. So now there, there's no circuit even though I'm working over here on the hot side much safer all right we're gonna put this guy up one thing i wanted to show you guys is this fuse that our main wire between the batteries is going to hook up to when i was trying to you know this was my plan to mount it on here it was going to the battery was in the way a little bit what was really cool is guy at the hardware store suggested i just get a longer bolt and put a nut on it so that's going to hold it out just a little bit further and then that wire is going to be able to come around and hook right on there. So, without further ado, I'm going to make this happen. I like to use a little Loctite on these nuts and always be really careful tightening these because you can easily crack the fuse body. Um, so now I'm gonna put on the main ground and we're gonna see if this thing is working. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel. And always feel free to leave us any comments or questions that you might have.